Hey guys, and welcome back. Kind of. You may notice we're not starting in our normal place this time. We're starting right in the lab. That's because I've decided to make this video completely backwards. Having looked at my most popular video and realizing that what it's about is uh, taking an overly complicated piece of lab equipment and making it simple and accessible, I decided to turn that whole concept on its head. And instead, we're going to be looking at the simplest possible piece of lab equipment and seeing just how far we can over-engineer it. So what is that? This is the tube rack. Found in every single lab that you've probably ever heard of, it holds tubes. Problem solved. That's its whole function. But what if we want to hold these tubes? Well, almost works a bit precarious. These tubes, you're just out of luck. What you need for that is to get a whole separate tube rack. All right, but what if you want to hold these tubes? Well, no lab I've ever seen has a tube rack for whole racks of tubes. This whole strip here, even in the lab I bring them to that works exclusively with strips of tubes, uses an improvised tube rack made from a pipette holder. So, how can we get all of these tubes into one rack so we can easily work between them all? One idea may be something like thumb screws. We use thumb screws to hold glassware when we're doing things like constructing filtration columns. They work great for attaching different things at different levels, and you can swap them out to attach things of all different sizes. So, could we use something like this that already is designed to hold different types of glassware to hold different types and sizes of tubes? Well, the big problem is that the thumb screws themselves take up space. We couldn't get our tubes close enough together to form any kind of a practical rack. Only if you wanted a tube rack the size of a lab bench could this work. Similar to thumb screws is grub screws, which go in and sit flush and are turned with a tool. However, the problem here is that you need a tool, and you have to take your hands off of everything to work with it. Also, you may think of a ratcheting mechanism, like is used in cup holders or other devices that are designed to go around different sized cylinders. Problem here is how do you undo that ratchet? A cup holder you can close all the way, but if you have to close it around a solid cylinder that you don't take out, you're going to need some kind of a key. Additionally, that ratcheting mechanism is going to take up space. Indeed, any kind of mechanism will. So, if we don't want to have all that excess material keeping our tubes further apart, what we really want is something modular. Different tube racks, or different tube holders rather, that we can swap in and out on the same tube rack. So, at this point in the video, allow me to climb atop the shoulders of some very tall giants and introduce Gridfinity. Gridfinity is a product of Voidstar Labs, an invention of Zach Freeman, and shared under this extraordinarily generous license here. What it is at its heart is a modular sorting system using this grid-based technology to hold different bins to store different components of all different sizes and types. However, since it is shared so freely and is 3D printed, people have gone on to design all different kinds of squares to fit this grid so that way we can hold anything from longer screws to Allen wrenches to that one specific set of feeler gauges that I lost the screw to and fixed with a thumb screw because it was the only thing within reach. Again, Gridfinity is not my idea, but since it has become a very large project, allow me to show my contribution. So here we are with the modular tube ray. Let me show you all the pieces that we've made, and you let me know if you think that this is a world record for most different tubes in one tube rack. We have 50 ml tube. We have 15 ml tube and test tube. We have 1.5 ml microcentrifuge tube and filter tube. We have 600 ml 
micro centrifuge tube. We have PCR tube. We have cuvettes. And we have strips of PCR tubes. And here we are with the most practical thing that I have ever made, possibly in my life, definitely on this channel, the fully modular tube rack. Allowing me to work with different sizes of tubes for different levels of sample preparation, all right from the same tube rack, easily portable, easily movable, all right in one simple piece of equipment. And once I'm done with preparation and need to move on to the next experiment, I'm able to immediately rearrange my whole rack, be all set up, and start loading the next style of tube. And seriously, I do mean practical. It's taken me a while to get this video out, and while I've been working with this, I have essentially turned my entire laboratory workspace into a Gridfinity-based ecosystem, entirely based around using modular tube rack pieces. So if you think that was awesome, I totally agree. Links to all of those STLs are down in the description below. Feel free to head on over to Thangs now, download them and start using them in your lab. Uh, please do leave a like before you go so the algorithm can get this kicked on to the next person. But if you want to stick around, you will remember at the beginning, I didn't say I was just going to make the tube rack better. I said I was going to over-engineer it as far as it could go. So let's get started on that half of the project. So what can we add to a tube rack to make it officially over-engineered? Well, first thought that always comes to my mind is color-changing LEDs. A policy I've learned is that if you stop asking yourself, does a project need color-changing LEDs, and start asking yourself, can a project have color-changing LEDs, you start getting yes as an answer a lot more. However, in this case, it is practical. We're going to be using these to have a red, yellow, green, go, no go rows for each of our tubes. But Matt, won't all those wires running into the bottom of a rack make the bottom an absolute mess? Well, where you saw a problem, I saw a chance to add more features. What we have here are 3D printed TPU footies. This rack is now more stable than ever. With those footies, our tubes are not going anywhere. And lastly, because in my personal experience, nothing ever has too many features until it has a detachable carrying handle. Let's go ahead and take this down to the lab. So here we have it, folks. Months of work, all in its over-engineered glory. A tube rack with color light indicators designating the hold, go, and no-go zones, allowing us to work multiple different tube types, multiple different designations for our samples, all on a module configurable platform. I would say that we have pushed this all the way to the point that we have the world's first smart tube rack. So, that being said, let me conclude this episode by saying, until next time, stay hungry.